uh, the late Gary North said there's only really two positions, really. There's optimillennialism and pessimillennialism. <laughs> All right. All right. So, That's good. Uh, so as an optimillennialist, I believe that the Great Commission is going to be fulfilled, that the nations are going to be converted and streamed to Christ, that uh, Romans 4.13 says it was not through the law that Abraham was to be heir of the world, right? Blessed, mm-hmm. blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Um, so it, it not, it's not, um, and in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, uh, we are to pray, thy kingdom come. It's not thy kingdom go, <laughs> mm. right? It's <laughs> thy, kingdom, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it mm. is in heaven. So what many Christians do is they transfer blessings that are promised to God's people on earth, and they just transfer them to heaven without a textual warrant. So Mm -hmm. when it comes to the statement that how can you believe that things are getting better and better after World War I, or World World War I was what killed um, secular post-millennialism. So post-millennialism had an orthodox run for several centuries then Mm -hmm. it they they lost jesus you know the western world sort of uh, dropped jesus out of it and and secularized uh, an optimistic view of progress right Mm -hmm. and world war one killed that and then world war two you know killed it deader if you if you will so if someone says um how can you believe that the world is getting better after world war two I would say, how can you believe that it's not going to get better after mm. reading Isaiah? After mm. reading, after reading, <laughs> right? So the issue in my mind is, what does the text say? Not mm-hmm. what do the newspaper? Not the question is not what the newspapers say. the The issue is not what my newsfeed says, because everybody knows in in journalism, if it bleeds, it leads. They they're going to rush mm-hmm. the bad news to you. Um, but I want to look at what the promises of God are in Psalm 2 and in Psalm 22 and in Psalm 110. Um, you know, there are many, many promises. And mm. uh, and so I just want to believe those promises. I have a lot more to go on than Abraham did. When, yeah. you know, when Abraham was taken outside of his tent, you know, Ur of the Chaldees was a pagan city. Abraham had left, you know, the idolatry that he'd grown up in. Uh, he's a nomad living in a tent and God takes him outside and shows him the stars and says, so shall your descendants be. Well, what did Abraham have to go on? Well, what he had to go on was the word of God, the promise of God. Mm, that's, yeah. that, that, should, that should be sufficient. 